The Las Vegas Raiders have had good luck with their offensive first round picks in recent years. 2018's Colt Miller is a franchise left tackle. 2019's Josh Jacobs is coming off of back to back thousand yard seasons. And 2020's Henry Ruggs, who will have better stats with better help this year, has already changed the way defenses can play against the Raider offense with his speed. That's because head coach John Gruden is an offensive minded guy with a good plan for his picks and a staff that can develop them. And no one should worry about Alex Leatherwood from this year under offensive line coach Tom Cable. But all the recent defensive first round picks are all still in question. However, 2019's Cleveland Furl and Jonathan Abram and 2020's Damon Arnett could be headed for breakout or at least breakthrough seasons. That's because new defensive coordinator Gus Bradley is now in charge with the plan and he has a role set for all of their skill sets. We go to the tape to see what that looks like. We start with Cleland Furl, who's always been a monster against the run. You're not going to be very successful running right at him. He has the length and strength to keep opposing offensive tackles off him. He also has the speed to chase you down from the backside running away from him. Look, he's too fast to leave him blocked on the backside. And he's very disciplined, so you're not going to cut it back on him. And as a pass rusher, he had growing pains trying to learn two positions. Oh, he learned the hard way he has to keep his head on more of a swivel as a tackle. These are not little chips from running backs. These are big chips from guards. When it was one-on-one -on -one blocking, he noticed the strength difference of interior linemen. But one thing he has is height and length to bat a few balls down. Furl got sick and lost 15 pounds that year, so he never really put pressure on the quarterback as a tackle until later on in the year. I remember thinking Fro was going to have a big rookie year when he got a sack in his first game as a Raider. But again, with all the sickness and weight loss and learning defensive tackle, he didn't really start getting to the quarterback as an end until later on in the season. Watch the hands and the dip here. Then of course he has that length to get the tackle's hands off him and disengage. Then here he wins with an inside move. I gotta show this, another inside move to get a pressure to help win the game. Pearl then comes back for year two, appearing to be bigger, stronger, and faster. Watch him close on Cam Newton to force the interception. Again, watch the speed. Then in week five, he gave the Kansas City Chiefs that work. He has a sack here, but he just couldn't hold on. He did, however, set that sack up for someone else. Furl would have had a sack here too, but Patrick Mahomes pushed forward for a gain of two yards. Here he gets his paw up and bats one down. 
Here he's gonna get pressure again, but he's gonna get tackled. But he flushes Mahomes right into teammate Max Crosby. And here, Furl's going to chase Mahomes all over the yard. And it ends in an incomplete pass. Here he's going to be Fisher with his length and force Mahomes to throw the ball away. Now here he is at tackling. He's going to hit the guard with the spinner. Another pressure to force an incompletion. Here he is on the edge again and that one arm stab is going to kill Fisher to force the interception. And that helped ice the game. He wasn't there to do that in the second game against the Chiefs, so you could say he was the big difference in the two games. Furl being out also made a difference against the Chargers, but this is the first game where he brought that heat right to quarterback Justin Herbert's face from the defensive tackle position. Here he comes from the tackle spot again, forcing him to throw short of the sticks on third down. He just bulls the tackle right back into the quarterback on this one. Then here on his stunt inside, he bulls the guard into the quarterback. He was the number 16 ranked edge rusher for a reason. He had a lot of pressures but wasn't quite getting the sacks. Then after a bout with COVID that causes him to miss two games, he gets two sacks. One from the edge and one from the interior. That was his last full game before going on injured reserve. But for a flash dominance in the spots. I can't wait to see him this year. Now we're on to April where we have a receiver running a deep over route. And that's Eric Harris's zone. But since he's not there, Abram tries unsuccessfully to cover for him, and it's a big play. That's on Harris. Now watch how that affects Abram later. Abram doesn't trust Harris, so he thinks he has to do everything. So when he sees the receiver there going deep, even though there's two guys on him, he still feels the need to be over there. And that leaves the inside receiver to catch the dig route right around this area. And it's a touchdown because Abram is so worried about Harris's job, he doesn't do his own. Here, Abram's supposed to back up in his zone. If he would have, he would have been able to stop Broncos receiver Jerry Judy from catching the ball in this area. But he takes a few steps toward an area someone's already covering. And you guessed it, we got a big play here. Here there's a running back going out in the flats and the Raiders have a linebacker on him. But for some reason he takes a few steps out toward the flat instead of getting into his deep responsibility right away. So we have this receiver right here running a dig route and catching the ball right behind him in this area right here. And this is why Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots always say, do your job. This is Abram's zone here, but he chases a scrambling Mahomes. So tight end Travis Kelsey catches the game winner right here. Between Harris being Harris and the safeties being interchangeable in Paul Gunther's system, Abram was lost, so Bradley is simplifying his role and making him a box safety. He'll have more responsibilities like this in a short zone. And he's good at that as he gets the interception here. He'll also get to play robber, something else he's good at. He's going to capitalize on a deflection here. And he showed he can cover the tight end a little bit. But he's going to have to get better if he wants to cover the likes of a Travis Kelsey. And he's been working at it as his hips have a little more swivel to them now. 
also is a box safety, he'll be right there for the run game. He got past the pulling guard to make that tackle. Here, he's going to deliver a big hit to Christian McCaffrey. Oh, that's too many yards, but the hit's a tone setter. Here comes another big hit. Oh. Here, Abram's going to diagnose it, get there, and make the play. And with all that speed he got, he'll chase that thing down from the backside. And he usually doesn't over pursue, so any cutback is cutting right back into him. Fans, we want to see that missile. The missile's coming in low on this one. Oh! He's flipping him on this one. Oh! You come over the middle in the passing game, he's going to get you. Oh! That was a big tight end. Watch what he does with this little receiver. Oh! Destroyed him. McCaffrey don't want to see Abram no more. Oh! Gave him that work. And you know the Chargers can get that work as he comes from the bottom left of your screen. Oh. Now we're on to Damon Arnett, whose greatest weakness far and away is staying healthy. On this play, he reaggravates a thumb injury that he already has a cast on. This one was scary, a concussion. He laid there motionless. He also had a neck injury and COVID that got him all the way down to 175 pounds. Beyond that, as he comes in motion, his off-man coverage isn't really for him. Oh, lost him. Route recognition is not something he's good at. When it comes to cover 2 or Tampa 2, he's alright. A lot of people blame him for this play right here, but that's on the safety in the Tampa 2. Blame him if you want to. It doesn't matter. That's not what he's good at. This right here is what he's good at. Man to man bump and run. He serves up the denial on Tyreek Hill. But let's go back to Ohio State to show his fit in Bradley's system. He was the number one press corner coming out of college in 2020. As he serves up the denial on that fade. Here he stops the out route. And here he denies the dig. And no, you're not slipping that slant past him either. Trevor Scott's gonna try him on that back shoulder fade and get denied. Again, he was the number one press corner coming from the school that pressed and also bails like Bradley likes to do. There he is at the top of the screen bailing into that cover three. Oh yeah, Arnett is good in that cover three facing the quarterback. On this deep ball down the middle, Arnett's going to get there when the ball gets there to break it up. Now he's in the straight cover three. They're going to try him deep. Now here he is in his own end zone. And he's going to drive on one and take it all the way back. Let's just say for argument's sake that Bradley wants taller, longer corners on the outside. 
Arnett broke in at Ohio State as a slot corner and was really good at it. Yup, he served up denials at slot corner too. Here he is again, and he's serving up a denial. Here he is inside, he takes his man away and the quarterback has to go somewhere else with the ball. Here he goes in motion with this man, he takes him away and the quarterback ends up taking a sack. Here he has his man again and they throw at Jeff Okuda instead. This is just to show you Arnett was not an off-man cover guy even at Ohio State. If the receiver catches this, it's a touchdown. Furl's role will continue as a guy that sometimes comes from outside and other times comes from inside. Having Yannick Ngakwe and Solomon Thomas will help a lot. Abram gets to stay in the box in short zones as a robber and covering mainly tight ends and running backs. And of course his physicality will be put to use against the run. And Arnett gets to play in cover 1, cover 3, press bail like he did at Ohio State. That means more of that and less of this. And the Raider defense improves. Thank you for watching. See you next time.